everybody. Welcome back to another video by Dissociated. This is Chloe, I'm the host, and I'm going to be giving you some advice on how to support, how to help anyone you know who has DID. One of the first things I wanna say before I start this video, I know I have a cut on my lip. Please don't let it distract you because hopefully this could make a difference to people you know who have DID because a lot of people aren't sure what the etiquette is when it comes to having a DID system as your friend or someone in your family or as your partner. The first thing to keep in mind is that people with DID are still people. <laughs> they're gonna experience emotions, they're gonna react to things, they've just got complex issues on their shoulders, but they're still gonna have to deal with the same things that you deal with on a daily basis. But because of the way their brains work, we have to deal with it in a slightly different way. Some people think that in order to support someone with DID, you should try and make them as normal as possible. You may think that, oh, if the host can deal with more things on a daily basis or that they're out a lot, then that means they're doing really well because they're almost acting like a normal person and they're handling everything with one personality. Unless the system is integrating, this isn't how people's brains work when they have DID. Our functions are split up between our alters. Generally, people with DID, one alter isn't made in a way that they can access all the areas of the brain that make it possible for them to handle every single situation. The way our brains have developed due to compartmentalization of personality, compartmentalization of ability, and compartmentalization of memory means that it's still healthy for people with DID to rely on and trust their system to handle different parts of life. It's how we're built. So trying to encourage one alter to take on everything is actually quite counterproductive. It's very good to support your friends with the ID, but don't try and take on their healing yourself. That has to come from them first. And unless you're a trained psychologist or a therapist and you know what you're doing, try not to Tell them what they should or should not be doing in order to get better. Unless it's simple things like you need to eat today or you need to stay hydrated or if you're unwell, you need to see a doctor. Don't say things like you should be out more often or you should be able to handle this as yourself. You don't need so and so alter. Be a friend, be a family member, be a partner. But unless you're trained and you've entered a relationship with that person as their therapist, don't try and take on their healing yourself. DID is first and foremost a trauma-related disorder. It develops because of childhood trauma. This doesn't necessarily have to be abuse. In a lot of cases it is abuse, but it can also be things like medical trauma, natural disasters, witnessing trauma. But it has to be repeated before the age of around seven to nine, which is when the personality fully integrates into one. So. If you're dealing with anybody with DID, you need to remember that they've been through a lot. DID is in some ways a form of complex PTSD. And if you know about PTSD, you'll know about things like triggers and flashbacks. All those things come with DID. So if you're interacting with a system or trying to get to know a system, be wary of their triggers. Not all triggers will make sense to you. Some people seem to have silly triggers. I say there's no such thing as a stupid or silly trigger. It's whatever the brain associates with something traumatic and it can take you back there, take you back to an unpleasant place, whether that's in terms of emotion, you relive the emotions, you can relive the whole experience, physical feelings can come back and you can completely lose yourself in that memory and forget what kind of year it is. So it's very, very important to be aware of the triggers of the DID system that you're trying to help. Try not to push aside or make any alter feel unwelcome. They all have a right to be there. Even if you can't see what they're doing to help the system, if they weren't needed, they wouldn't be in that system. Everybody has a right to use the body. Everybody has a right to time out in the body and their time fronting. And it's, it's very hurtful for somebody to say that sorry, you're not my favorite or you're not wanted or to imply that by asking for somebody else. 
if somebody comes up to you and let's say your best friend is called Jacob and you're like, oh, hi, oh, it's been ages since I've seen you. Who's out today? And they say, oh, it's Anna. And you say, oh, oh, I really wanted to talk to Jacob. That's very hurtful. I mean, if an alter is very distressed and you need to ask for a protector, sometimes repeating the name of an alter can help bring them to front or you could ask the distressed alter, can you reach so-and-so? if that's going to help them. Or if you do need to talk to someone that day, you can say, at some point today, I really need to talk to so-and-so. If you can pass that message along that I need to contact them at some point today, that would be really helpful for me. But not saying like, oh, I don't want to talk to you right now. I need to talk to someone else. Or can you switch out? Or, oh, I, was, I wanted to talk to someone else right now. Or I'll come back later when you're not out or when so-and-so's out. It's very hurtful and derogative and dismissive. So please don't do that. So to sum up, don't ask for another altar to front unless it's an emergency or you need to pass on some information, in which case, politely bring up the subject. Don't be dismissive. Every altar has feelings and emotions. Some might have very, very repressed emotions or not express them very well. Always try and make the altars in the system that you're dealing with feel respected and loved and wanted. In the bigger picture, they're all part of the person that you love. Every altar makes up that system and that system is the person that you're dealing with. Everything that affects one altar can possibly have a knock-on effect on anybody else. If you're trying to support the system, that means you have to support every altar in that system. It doesn't mean you have to love them all or even like them all, but you have to respect them. Another thing is a lot of people with DID and PTSD and trauma related disorders have an exaggerated startle reflex. A lot of people find it very funny to make people with exaggerated startle reflexes jump because their reactions are usually extreme or dramatic and some people find that amusing. Don't do this. This can be very, very triggering. Another thing is because a lot of people with DID have trauma, be careful how you touch them. Make sure you know where they're happy to be touched, even if it's just like some people aren't happy to be hugged and this will be different for every altar in a system. You need to make sure you know what they're comfortable with. Are they comfortable being hugged? Hugged. Is it okay to touch your shoulder? Like for us, I'm happy being hugged and, and cuddled by friends and, and people I know. Nobody is allowed to touch my neck. That's a big, big trigger area for me and things like that. It can be really obscure areas that some people have that are big no-go zones that you might not think. And this can be different for every altar. So for example, Gregory doesn't like to be touched at all. Uh, he hates it and he don't touch Gregory <laughs> kind of thing. But if you assume that everybody feels the same way about the body they're in or how you can touch or interact with them, then you're going to be in for a little bit of a shock because every ultra in a system is their own person. They'll have a different relationship with their body and they'll have different memories of what's happened to them in that body. So be careful with how you touch and interact with a person with DID. You don't have to make it into a big deal. You can just ask, are you comfortable with hugs? Or how, how do you feel about physical touch? Would you prefer it if I don't touch you? Or if you're not sure, just say, can I, can I give you a hug? Are you okay with that? It's 100% okay if not. I just wanted to reassure you, something like that. Never ever deliberately trigger out an altar. Even if it's using a positive trigger, unless it's an emergency situation and you already have agreement from the people in the system that this is okay in an emergency situation, triggering out an altar is a big no-go. There are negative triggers and positive triggers. Negative triggers are bad triggers that can trigger an altar to front for a negative reason, may cause a flashback or something like that. So for example, a lot of times if, if they're shouting around or people banging things, Ruby will front. It's a negative trigger for her and it will call her to the front, but she'll be in fight mode, ready to protect. Doesn't mean she's gonna be aggressive or fight you, but she'll be in a very distressed state. Other negative triggers can call forward and alter which will force them to relive a memory. So for me personally, walking in, in the dark in wooded areas because of trauma that um, we have, that 
will often trigger out Omega to front and then she almost always will re-experience the trauma that makes that situation triggering. Positive triggers can be things like maybe a little seeing a toy. A lot of systems see kids toys or something very childish or very very bright it can trigger a little out and that's because they really like it and they really enjoy it and they're like oh wow boom, wanna go to front sort of thing. That can happen with adults as well. Food is a positive trigger for Kyle. If Kyle was around food, generally he will front, <laughs> not every time, but it is a positive trigger for Kyle. But doing that on purpose, it, it feels violating. It feels like somebody's robbing you of your own control over your body and your mind, and like someone's robbing you of your memory. So for example, I knew somebody that used to deliberately trigger out our littles in a positive way when I didn't want them to. And this could be just because we were talking about something serious and they didn't want to deal with it, or they were bored of me and they wanted to play with the littles. I wasn't okay with that and I told them like, don't don't do this, they would do it anyway because obviously when the little would front, you know, they'd, they'd have, you know, playtime or they'd read books and stuff like that and the littles were really, really happy so they struggled to see why this was wrong. They were like, oh, you were so happy, but that wasn't me. You forced my mind into a different state. You took my awareness away from my body and you triggered out a part of me that's that wasn't ready to front or without my say so it, it is very vulnerable it's like somebody reaching into your chest grabbing a piece of you and pulling it forward and pushing you backwards but there's nothing you can do about it and you don't know what they've done with that piece of your heart that's in your hand until you come back and even then you might not know so please be careful with positive triggers and negative triggers don't try and trigger and alter out just because you want to spend time with them because it's very unpleasant. <laughs> Respect the privacy of each alter. Not every alter is going to enjoy sharing the same things with you. Not everyone is going to want to open up about things and that doesn't have to be about serious things like trauma or deep thoughts that they have. It could also be like have you eaten today or what are your hobbies and stuff like that. Respect the privacy of each alter. They are a person. Just because you know say a lot of other people in the system or you're very close with perhaps the host. With this other alter they won't know you. You may be a complete stranger to them or someone you don't know very well or maybe they just have difficulty trusting. You need to respect the privacy of those individuals and you need to respect the way that they work in the system. Not everybody is going to react the same way. Probably not everybody is going to want to be your friend, at least right away. It's very common to have different relationships with everybody in a system. So some people you may be friends with, some people you may be a lot closer with than others, some people may not get on, but again mutual respect is very important and things can change over time but you do need to understand that everybody is going to see external people in a different light some people in the system will be very very wary and try not to take that personally if they're wary of people in the outside world or don't seem to really want to interact with you there's a reason for it and it's probably not personal it's because they're trying to keep the system safe and because of things they've experienced in the past they'll be wary of letting strangers in. They may try and test you to see whether you're just gonna fly by or whether you're serious about really wanting to care about this system and whether it's worth the risk of letting you in. Be respectful of every alter's needs and understand that everyone is going to feel a little bit differently about every situation. Treat a new alter fronting as if a new person has just walked into the room. If one alter has shared something with you, so a memory of trauma, that doesn't mean that you then have the right to tell another alter that unless you've been given permission. There's a reason why not every alter will remember certain things, so be careful with what information you share with other alters if you don't have permission to share that. So for example, someone might come out and you'll be like, oh, so-and-so said this, or oh, so-and-so told me about what, what happened back then, then this alter might have no awareness of that. And it might not be okay for you to, to share that information without prior permission. So just, just be careful when exchanging information between alters. Don't joke about trauma. It's, it's just, just don't, don't, don't do that. It's not, 
it's not funny and it's hurtful. So yeah, uh, no trauma jokes, please. Jokes about trauma and things like child abuse um, are never going to be received well. And if they are received well, there's probably a reason for that. Be careful. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to change your sense of humour and things like that, but like I said before, be aware of what will trigger the system you're interacting with. And try and be sensitive to the things that may have experienced or may have seen other people experience. Just, just be aware of why these people are how they are. Also, when you meet a system, don't expect that the host is always going to be the one out. Some of my friends <laughs> uh, haven't got into the habit of checking who's out when they first meet us. So for example, we've said we're gonna meet in a pub or something like that. And I turn up and they'll assume that it's Chloe fronting because I'm the host. Just because the system has a host or maybe more than one host doesn't guarantee that that person is always going to be the person who's fronting when you meet them. So it's always a good idea if you're not sure, <laughs> just to check. Asking all the time can be a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you're a bit blended and you're not quite sure who's fronting. But it is okay just to check if you're not sure, like, can I just check who's out right now? Or is this still blah blah blah, something like that is 100% okay to ask. Approach it delicately and know that you're not entitled to that information and it's okay for someone to say I'm not sure right now because sometimes you can kind of be almost between alters like two parts of your mind are overlapping, a bit like two cogs trying to turn together and that, that's called blending when there's a lot of alters kind of in the front space and you're not quite sure who's there sometimes it can be a mix of a few alters and sometimes it can be just like who am I right now I don't know <laughs> and that's often accompanied by extreme dissociation uh, it can stop you from understanding who's actually fronting What should you do if there's been a switch? Give them time. If you want to see a really good example of how to react to a switch in a really good way, I was doing a collaboration with Scarlett from the Labyrinth system and we were doing it over Skype. I switched out to Kyle, so Kyle fronted and Scarlett reacted incredibly and I made a little clip of what that was and went through it to explain why that was a good way to react to a switch, to have a visual representation of what a good way to react would be and if you'd like to see that you can see it up here. But give the person who's just stepped forward time. If you've noticed that there's a switch, don't immediately be like, oh, are you switching? Who's this? Who's that? When you're switching, it can be very disorientating, often accompanied by very large headache, <laughs> at least for us, which we call switching headaches, and that is quite common. It can feel dizzy. The person who's come forward may not know where they are. They might not know who you are. They may not know if they're in a safe situation, and it will take a little bit of time to regain their bearing. Things. Reassure them that they're safe. Say, take your time. I usually, when somebody switched out, if I don't know who it is, usually I can tell by the voice. For example, with my partner system, I can tell by the way the noise they make when they switch, or the way they're holding their shoulders, or their head, or their voice, or what they do with their hands when they switch. But if you're not really familiar with someone, and even sometimes with my partner system, sometimes I'm not sure. So I'll say, hey, who's this? This is Chloe. Um, take your time, or something like that. You just wait, 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 wait. Give them time until they've adjusted and say, hiya, hi, who's this? It's, it's Chloe. I haven't had any complaints. So <laughs> I hope that's right. That's how I'd like to be greeted after a switch. And you can also see how our best friend Anna reacted to Nadia switching out in the collaboration that we did, and that was in person. She always reacts brilliantly to switches. Anna is fantastic. So if you'd like to see that collaboration that we did with our best friend, then you can see that up here. Those are really good examples, so go with that. Dissociation can be very, very disorientating. Don't touch someone while they're switching or very dissociated unless you know for 100% sure it's okay because it can be very startling. Another thing, if somebody's dissociating, don't do that. Don't do that. I've had people do that to me before because it's kind of like zoning out, that people assume. So I've been like dissociating off, like star staring into space and possibly like on the verge of a, a switch and somebody's obviously wanted me to stay or wanted to get my attention and just 
horrifying. Please don't do that. It's startling. It can force a switch to somebody who could be triggered by that or go straight into fight flight defense mode. When you're dissociating, it's kind of like your conscious brain is almost putting its feet up. Anything that happens while you're dissociating goes straight through to fight flight dissociate. There's another one. I can't remember what it is, but please don't do that. Allow them time. Maybe look into grounding and things like that, but yes. So those are some really basic ways of supporting or being aware of the needs of a system if you have a friend who has dissociative identity disorder or a family member who has DID or a partner. And this goes for both DID and OSDD. Just remember why they have this disorder, how it works. It's really helpful to understand how it forms. If you do know anything about the past of this system, it, it, it may help you understand why they have certain certain alters or why certain alters act in the way they do. You don't need to know somebody's past in order to understand them and you don't need to understand them in order to respect them. So even if this is just someone you're meeting in passing, just be aware of these things. Be aware of their needs and that their needs may be different to those of a regular neurotypical person. To sum it up, be wary of a system's needs. Make every alter feel respected. Know that it's okay to have a different relationship with everybody in the system and be careful of triggers and of touch. Make sure that you know what is safe for that particular alter and that particular system and what isn't. I hope that this has been helpful and may help you relate to anybody in your life that has DID or OSDD more. If you'd like to know more about DID, how it forms, the science behind it, what the psychology of it is, we have a playlist called Debunking DID which goes into all of the scientific elements and has a lot of studies that you can access all linked and referenced and if you need advice videos whether that's about DID or mental health or just explanations of how dissociative identity disorder works, please go ahead and check out our playlist. It's been an absolute pleasure making this video today and I, I really hope that it helps some people out there. So I hope to see you all soon. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you enjoyed this and support our little dissociated family. Thank you to all our disassociates watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.